slimy. Oh. It was just snow everywhere earlier. But anyway, yeah, all snow here a minute ago. Well, not a minute ago, a few hours ago. It's all gone now. The remarkable bit is, though, it's April. It's, it's very unable. Sorry, battery went. I think that's a knack of battery. Right, where was I? This is Better Sequoid, everyone. And this is a new video, start of a new series. Start of my first series. But the internet currently is full of Avengers and game stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But I thought I'd have to mix it up a bit. Bring a Land Rover video to the table. It's not new, it's something I thought of ages ago, but I hadn't got round to it because I th kept thinking of these big ideas and I thought, well, just keep it simple. Just have the owner and their vehicle. So that's what I'm gonna do. A series of owners and their vehicles because a vehicle is mostly only as interesting as the owner. And these owners put a lot of time and effort into their vehicle and they know it better than anybody else. So I think it's best that they show you around rather than I show you around. This video now is with my friend Rich, who's got a 127 inch Defender. I wasn't gonna show it, in fact, I canned it. <laughs> the, the sad part was that the camera I used at the time, one of the sensors, the focusing sensors, uh, it's a run and gun camera, and the focusing sensor was, something's happened to it, and it's never been right since roughly that day. So I was filming away all jolly, but it kept going in and out of focus without boring you to death. I've decided to reset anyway because it's really interesting and I don't think that picture quality supersedes um, content, do you know what I mean? I'm Rich from Bug Out Vehicles UK. I've got a YouTube channel, and this is my uh, this is my build that I've been doing for three years. It's a Land Rover 127. I've taken the V8 engine out because of the miles per gallon, and it was on LPG, which took a huge amount of space up in the back. I've put a 200 TDI in with an automatic gearbox, uh, which has made it around 24, 25 miles to the gallon if I drive steady. So it's it's a very usable vehicle now. It's very comfortable being an automatic. Um, I've upgraded most things on the vehicle now, so the engine, gearbox, that's all, all changed. Um, it's off-grid, so we've got the solar panel, uh, that charges up the leisure battery on the back, which runs things like the fridge, the LED lighting, and charges everything that I need. So it's, it is very, very usable for its size. Um, it's not a day-to-day -day car, but it's, it's doing everything I need to do, and it will still off-road. A lot of people think that these won't, but with the articulation that I get, there's, there's very little that stops it. It's only the overhang on the back and a few waffle boards and a bit of setup time, we can get through anything. Right, so we're at the rear of the vehicle now. Um, on the back of it, I've got a 1.4 armadillo awning with the side on. So when I've got the door open, I've got a sheltered area that I can cook, I can wash up, I can do any of my camp jobs when I'm in the woodlands in this area and still be out of the weather. So a very, very handy thing to have. I've got the LED lighting all the way around. Um, so in the winter days, late evenings, things like that, plenty of light, 360 degrees. So inside, this, um, this step here, totally detachable, this is just easy access in and out and it's also somewhere to keep the water butts on and your, your miscellaneous things for your general camping. Um, one pin, the whole thing comes out and you can off-road again. You can put it in the back or stick it somewhere else. When I, when I go away for the weekend on heavy off-roading, I just leave that at home. And this is something that I've wanted for around about 10 years since I've been into this whole off-grid thing. Um, it's, it's the Snowmaster fridge from LVB and basically it's a 40 litre, it comes with the bag and everything, and it just works. It's got the light in it, the remote control, it's, it, it does everything. That I, I'm chuffed to bits with it, because it's one of them things I've persevered without for so long. 
and the next job on this one instead of plugging it up here from a charging point is i have a little anderson lead just down the bottom i've, I've got a totally separate um, battery system for the rear of the vehicle uh, running a merlin split charge system so as soon as i turn the ignition off the cranking battery is isolated uh, by doing that i can do whatever i want for as long as i want in the back and know that it's always going to start so you, you've got that kind of dependability then um, and what that what it is it's, it's a large battery bank in the rear which feeds i've got multiple marine switch panels with the fuses in so really really easy to do just run a cable to it there's a fuse at the far end for the the actual panel itself and then all these switches are all individually fused so if there's any issues you just go to that local point and you can sort it so just little things it, it makes life very very easy and it's, it's, it's all cheap and easy to do so inside here we, this started, uh, it was before anyone was doing the nicer cabinets uh, and I always, I like to look at other motorhomes, things like that and I really, really like the way uh, the Volkswagen crowd do the back of their transporters. So this is actually the same length as a T5 long wheelbase. The only difference is where a T5 is this high, uh, I got bus stop VW to stretch the measurements up to this high so I can utilise more space. So that's, that's where this came from and it, it seems to be a very, very popular option now for anyone with a larger vehicle to do this. Um, we've got the two burner gas stove over there with a sink. Um, that's very rarely used because I like to be outside. Uh, I've got my own on-demand hot water system. Um, just down here, we've got the blow air diesel heater. So, and then sub-zero temperatures. You can always wake up toasty warm. I can leave it on a, a, a very steady temperature. And then what I do is before I get out, bang the temperature up a bit and it's, it's just cosy, it's nice. It's nice to look out the window and, and see the, the horrible conditions and feel the Land Rover rocking and, and all the rest of it and, and still be very, very comfortable. The, uh, the sofa that I'm on now, this all pulls down into a double bed. So it's, uh, I think it's around about four foot, maybe four and a half foot wide. Uh, it's six and a half foot long. So it's, it's, it's big enough for a fat lad like me to be very comfortable. Uh, it's, 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 it's working now to the point where everything's done, it's in its place how I want it. I'm just now refining it and getting all the edges polished. So another six months time, all the finishing touches should be on. So it's, it's a very, very comfortable base vehicle. The kit that I have, it's, it's a rolling kind of evolution of, of what I'm using because what I tend to do, rather than the overlandy thing where you'll take one trip of a lifetime, or maybe every five years gone do something. I'm out most weekends in the woodland using the vehicle. Um, I've got the heavy duty canvases and things like that. So they'll take a fire underneath them. They'll, they'll take the trees rubbing up against them. Everything's got to be tough. And that's why I went for this vehicle. It originally, it's an ex-military battlefield ambulance. The solar panel on it, uh, I chose that one because it's a flexible one. So they, they tend to be a little bit tougher. It's 100 watt, which is around five and a half amp. The reason I went for that size is because that's uh, enough that when my fridge is going full tilt, that compensates it. So it, it works nicely with that. Once the fridge is down to temperature, it's actually putting more in than it's taking out. So that, that works really, really well. I will be putting some additional ones on the roof, but this is enough for now with the way I've got it set up. It's, uh, it's a very efficient, kind of way to, to do it because it's with it being separate and everything being LED there's very little draw so you can stay out for extended periods of time. You can get very expensive panels um, but this one I've, I've had a few of these now and they're eBay specials they're not quite the output of the the more expensive ones but the way technology moves on it's almost disposable it's it's one of them things where that was half the price of a high-end one but by the time that that's failed and the high-end one's still going, the technology's moved so far anyway, you just then replace for the next generation. So I've had, I've had this vehicle now for uh, three years and one month. Uh, in that time, it's, I could have done it a lot faster, but it's, it's that trade-off of actually using the vehicle, going out each weekend, doing my thing where I'm getting the use out of it and then having the weekends at home where I'm actually working on it and doing things. So it's also, it's done paycheck to paycheck. So if I do some good overtime, the Land Rover gets something shiny.
So it's it's just that rolling progression, and it's it's scary when you go from bumper to bumper, and you start making a list of how much you've spent and what you've changed and what you've modified, and then you tell the insurance company, and they, they don't quite get why it's worth what it's worth. So, but all those all those shiny bits they do add up. A lot of people think Land Rovers are unreliable, but I think a big part of that is people wait till something fails before they'll replace it. So, and it's also a lot of DIY mechanics like myself. So what I'm trying to do at the minute is replace anything that's, that's old. So we've had new braking system and not just replaced with the cheaper parts, it's vented discs, it's grooved discs, it's bigger calipers, everything, the, the stages in what you can have. And if you can upgrade slowly, you end up with a better product overall. So new radiators, so the cooling system's gonna go for another umpteen years. We've got new power steering, pump and everything so that's another one that's a common thing you get a little bit better one than it came with originally and it's it makes a good vehicle out of it uh, like with the seats Land Rover seats they are not made for a six foot three fat lad so it's got the Mazda RX-8 leather heated bucket seats in it which tied in with the automatic and the diesel it makes it comfortable enough to do long journeys without having to get out every couple of hours to try and unfold yourself so it's it's, it's just finding them one little thing and then using it. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, change it. There's no traditional bulbs in it. So everything from the side lights, uh, these were from bolt-on bits, I think they were, for the kit. Um, the indicators, they're all uh, LED now. The best thing that I have ever put on a, a Land Rover is these headlights from LVB. They were, they were a lot of money for a headlight, but the output, it's, it's phenomenal it's just that crisp clean light and you can actually see what's going on and and the funny thing is with these on on main beam the, the brighter the uh, light bars so I, I had a smaller light bar up there and it just made it redundant just overnight by fitting these and it's it, they just work and it's, it's something i should have done on land rovers before now so they're, they're very very good I've gone for an ex-utility board front bumper, which winch bumpers are tough anyway, but this one's even thicker. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, if I hit something with that, it's a, it's a chassis bending job. So that's something I don't want to do. Um, but being in the woodland and things, it's, it's ideal if I do need to push something or nudge something. We've got the winch on there. That's, uh, that, that gets used more for moving trees around rather than actually recovery. So that, that gets used. I, I, w I wouldn't even like to, to guess how much this has cost because it's one of those things. I got the vehicle fairly cheap. It's scary when you look at the items where it's two or three hundred pounds here and two or three hundred pounds there and it, it adds up to tens of thousands of pounds, but it doesn't devalue. It's not like I've got a new vehicle on finance. So this is mine, it's all paid for and when I have the extra money, it gets another, another bit on it. Once you've got a couple of these vehicles on site, Life's very, very comfortable. You can, you can get the big awnings out, you can get dry shelter between them all, get a fire going and, and life's good. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. <laughs>